Welcome filmmakers, fans, and friends to another episode of Indie Cinema Showcase. We're your hosts, Christina Carmona. And I'm Nando Luis Roman. We're here at the Wayne Dents Performing Arts Center in Sanford for the Love Your Shorts Film Festival. The Love Your Shorts Film Festival has been around for a decade, showcasing works from filmmakers all over the world. We're going to be checking out the film festival, chatting with some of the filmmakers, and showing you everything the fest has to offer. So come along with us as we take this exclusive look at the Love Your Shorts Film Festival. Hey guys, I'm here with Christina Hallerbach, festival organizer of the Love Your Shorts Film Festival. Christina, first things first, great name. Thank you. Same <laughs> to you. You know, it's, 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 I just had to say it. I had to say it. So you look lovely today. Thank you very much. So can you tell us a little bit about the Love Your Shorts Film Festival? Sure. So Love Your Shorts Film Festival has been here in historic downtown Sanford for 11 years. And it really was a bunch of locals that love film that wanted to honor that here in their town. And so as things progress and drinks are had and people start collaborating, they eventually came up with a shorts film festival that is now in its 11th year at a really awesome historic uh, theater. Wonderful, and how many submissions did you get this year? So this year we got over 480 submissions um, that we opened up in, um, I believe, April to October. So it's quite a lot of films to go over in that time frame. That's fantastic. And now, is that number any different than previous years? It is very similar. I think last year we had about 430. So we were worried that maybe the pandemic would lessen the amount of submissions, but it didn't seem to stop filmmakers from wanting to create and submit. That in itself is fantastic, honestly, the fact that people are still creating. Now, what made you guys decide to go with a live in-person? festival. So uh, I'm also on the board here at the theater as well as on Love Your Shorts. Okay. So we had been doing a lot about COVID medication and luckily, you know, we have a 500 seat theater. So at a little less than 50% capacity, we're at 240. We were able to really social distance people and enforce the mask and do temperature checks at the door with our ushers. And we've been doing other productions before the festival. So I felt really confident with the things that we'd already been doing that it would work well for the film festival as well. That's fantastic. And it gives people somewhere to go to see their films. Because a lot of filmmakers, this is their first time seeing on the big screen. Sure. So that's, that's, really, that's really fantastic. So when it comes to the pandemic and all those kind of stuff, we know that things are a little bit different. So what can people typically expect from Love Your Shorts when they come here? So I know, like I said, a little different, but one thing that we always love to cater to is the filmmakers. We make it a point to recognize them because without them, there is no festival. There is no celebration of film or art without the hard work that they put into it. So I think that our focus has always been on creating an environment where they can really um, network and get to know one another. A lot of filmmakers have said that, you know, their short films are their calling card or their business card of how they get to meet other people and get inspired to do other ideas. So we really try and create events and moments to facilitate that ability to network and get to know one another. And Christina, I know you're a busy lady, <laughs> so I will, I will let you go. But before that, can you tell us where we can find information about Love Your Shorts, where filmmakers can submit, lovers of film can come and watch some of these great films? Sure, we're really easy, it's loveyourshorts.com. It's always on Valentine's Day weekend, so our love is not necessarily our partners, it is the love of film, and we sacrifice being without them in order to put this festival on every year. But loveyourshorts.com is a great way. You can also follow us on Facebook. Um, we do our submissions through Film Freeway. So if you're on Film Freeway, it's really easy to look us up at Love Your Shorts as well. And we have some really great reviews. So if you're doubting our honest uh, interviews, you can also read a lot about what other filmmakers thought about our hospitality and our festival. Wonderful. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit with me. I really appreciate it. No problem. Anything for another Christina. <laughs> you're welcome. Hey guys, so I'm here with Lisa Mills at Love Your Shorts Film Festival where we just finished watching her documentary, uh, Son of a Sweeper. 
Tell us a little bit about your film. Well, Son of a Sweeper is about um, a man in India who was born into the untouchable caste, but somehow was able to work hard against the odds and uh, come up through university, graduate school, and now he is a social activist and he's working in his community to try to create educational opportunities for the children of the untouchables. So the untouchables are a caste in India that are relegated to doing sanitation work, everything from sweeping the streets to cleaning the toilets by hand. And even though the caste system is, is no longer legal in India, there are still a lot of um, cultural um, discriminations that happen against people in the untouchable caste. So Vimal Kumar, the main um, social actor in the film, uh, we follow him from city to city as he works with the untouchables in their slums and creates these free educational resource centers for their children so the children won't be relegated to the same sanitation jobs as their parents. That's amazing. I mean, it's it's sad to even you know think about the fact that there is these social class systems in you know in the rest of the world like that um, that really puts people in those kind of position. So it's an amazing thing that uh, he's out there doing these kind of stuff. Now, as a documentarian, one of the biggest things is trying to come up with a subject matter. How did this particular subject come about? Well, I love to talk about this because Vimal and I actually met at an academic conference at the University of Georgia in spring of 2018, and I was screening a documentary uh, at that uh, conference, and Vimal was in the audience and saw that film, and he came up to me afterward and he said, uh, I really enjoyed your film. Let me tell you about the work that I'm doing against discrimination with my people in India. Uh, we went to, to dinner that night. Uh, we connected, so to speak, and uh, we started talking to each other via Skype. Uh, and then we just decided um, that his work would be a good documentary. And so what I had to do at that point was try to find some funding to get to India and also find a couple of graduate students that were interested in going with me to shoot the film. It took about a year to get it all arranged. I couldn't believe it, actually, that we were able to raise the funds and that I was able to find a couple of great grad students to go with me, but we sure did it. We went there in spring of 2019 and spent three weeks in India and then came back and edited the film. Wow, that's, that's a pretty ambitious project. Um, when it came down to actually filming the project itself, what kind of challenges did you face having to go to India to film it? Well, the first challenge was uh, that we were not able to get a permit from the Indian authorities to make this film because when you see the film, you'll understand why. It's not necessarily a tourist portrait of India. So we were operating really on a tourist visa. So that meant we had to travel light, that we could not really use a boom pole microphone because that would attract way too much attention. So we had to work very quietly. Um, we worked closely with Vimal. He took us around to the different cities where he was doing his work. And we just traveled uh, in small cars, carrying the camera gear on our laps. It was really uh, guerrilla filmmaking. Very much so. Well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. Congratulations on winning Best Documentary at the Love Your Shorts Film Festival. It was truly a magnificent film, and I was very thankful that I was able to watch it. So thank you again. Best of luck to you with the film in the future, and we hope to see more from you. Thank you so much. All right, guys, I am here today with Christine Kane and Irene Pons of A Break for an Impact. Christine, tell me a little bit about this film, and you as well, Irene. Feel free to you know jump in at any time. Sure. So uh, this was actually a project that took place over uh, UCF's spring break of last year, um, around March. And Irene is a legal studies professor. She was able to take a few students to the border, um, and I was able to come along as the sole filmmaker. And the idea was to capture the experience for the rest of her class, her very large class that couldn't, uh, you know, couldn't bring everyone along. And what we found there was just so impactful and so 
heartbreaking and moving that we we decide to not only turn it into a, a docu series for her course, but also a short uh, doc. So. Fantastic. Now, this is a really important issue that, you know, I'm really glad that you guys, you know, really put out and gave us the opportunity to watch because you really don't know unless you see it. Now, how did you decide that this is what you wanted to do? It kind of came together because we had a, a contact there and that contact at, the, in the, at our university put us in touch with a group and organization on the ground. Um, unfortunately, that's what you see at the beginning of the documentary where they're saying you can't film, you can't do this because they were working with lots of people and different organizations and they didn't want our, their name to be used. So we kind of scrapped that. We did go there and for three days we worked with that group. But then the students w went to the border and we met with all these other organizations and that was it. They were like, all right, we don't want to work with that group anymore. Let's go do our own thing. And that was what transpired on doing our own thing. Now, how did you decide, how does it go with who, what students get to go to these types of things? So we actually had um, everyone apply that wanted to come and they had to have a minimum GPA requirement to attend. We reviewed the applications and we made it a first come, first serve, but they had to fund their entire trip on their own. Oh, wonderful. Now, what are your next plans? I mean, you're here at Love Your Shorts. Mm -hmm. You guys have won audience choice. Fantastic. You. Very well done and very well deserved. What's next for this documentary? The docuseries also won an uh, Emmy, uh, so there's that um, <laughs> that we're really proud of. And I, I should let you take it with what the future steps for this might you, be. She's entirely too modest. She forgets to say that she filmed all the entire drone footage in the, in the film, which is amazing <laughs> as well. And so I'm really, it was so great to work with her and to learn. But um, our next step is to go back. So we have plans to go back either in April or the summer. We have a few COVID restrictions right now that we're trying to work through mm -hmm. for the safety of everyone involved, the people on the ground, as well as our students. So, but we also have a really great and exciting opportunity to go to Nogales, Arizona, in the middle of the desert where there's a nonprofit organization working on putting meal packs, blankets, and food out on migratory trails. And so that is going to be one of our stops. Mm -hmm. You ladies are fantastic. Well, congratulations on that Emmy. Thank you. Wow, I'm sure that at the time that was the least right. of the things that you were thinking. Right. And this just goes to show, you know, how impactful that was. And we appreciate you bringing that forward. Now, where can we find information to help? Where can we find information about this documentary? Yeah, sure. So abreakforimpact.com is where we are kind of collecting all of the organizations that are on the ground and it's kind of a way to direct you to all of those those sites and really what they need right now is is donations they need money um, they're doing everything themselves they're not getting any help from the government uh, local or national or federal so wouldn't you say that's yeah money. the best way to yeah donation well thank you guys and you heard it here find this documentary donate it's a it's an amazing cause and if you have the opportunity to see the documentary i super recommend it thank you ladies for sitting and chatting with me and good luck on all your you know future endeavors thank, thank you, you so much you. you're very welcome hey guys so i'm here with lisa belcher at the love your shorts film festival lisa thanks for joining us today can you tell us a little bit about the film that you have in the festival yeah absolutely so um my film is hobbling a run it's a it's a short film it's a western comedy um, we shot it out in Blanco, Texas at the Pinemore Old West Studio, which is an amazing place that's just an old-fashioned studio, all set up kind of with everything that we needed. And um, it took us three days to shoot the film, which were three very long days. <laughs> um, but, um, but yeah, so it's a, it's a short. It's about 18 minutes. And um, I'm so thankful to the Love Your Shorts Film Festival that they're playing it uh, this year. So I'm excited to be a part of it. Now, it's a comedy, correct? Yes. So, on top of being a comedy, you decided to go with the Western. What, what prompted you to actually combine those two together? <laughs> well, um, if I'm b being totally honest with the, with the writer, Aaron Hale, who also plays the lead, Clarence Jasper, or Clarence, sorry, is the, is the, uh, the main character, he, um, he and I were co-writing a feature together, and we were having some writing meetings, and my uh, producing partner, Christian Oltano, called and said, hey, I have this location for a Western. Um, let's make a Western. And so I just mentioned it casually to Aaron, like, right. what do you think about a Western? And he's like, hmm, I don't know. And he literally went home and wrote the first draft of Favelina Run. And so I read it and I'm like, ah, 
okay, Western, that's what we're doing next. So, and it was funny. So Western comedy, I don't know. It just kind of was like the next thing on our path. So. Well, you know, honestly, like comedy is one of those genres that, you know, it can be difficult to navigate. But I mean, like when you add something like Western to it, I think it's something that will actually make it work properly. So um, is this the first time that you're here at Love Your Shorts Film Festival? No, this is my second time. Um, we played here uh, two years ago. Um, I directed a short film called Guest of Honor um, that co-starred Lucas Hassel, who is a kind of a staple here at uh, Love Your Shorts. Love, love Lucas, if you're watching, we miss you, man. <laughs> we you love should be you. here. <laughs> um, we had such a blast here two years ago. Of course, we didn't have COVID, so it was really fun. But um, but yeah, so that was a drama, and um, it was really well received. I was really happy with that. So um, of course, you know, Love Your Shorts was on my uh, list of festivals to submit Hobbling Around. And so. what keeps you coming back to Love Your Shorts? This is a special festival. I, um, let's see if I can um, put it into words. I think one of the things, there's a lot of filmmakers that come, which is really important because um, networking is a really big deal. That's how, that's how Lucas and I met um, at a film festival. And secondly, Love Your Shorts does a really great job of networking in the community. Mm -hmm. And so there's so many people in the theater who are not filmmakers, which right. is nice, too, to, you know, hear their feedback. I mean, you drive around this town and they put the signs everywhere and everything. And, um, you know, the, the everybody that puts on this festival is so welcoming and wonderful. And I know this was kind of a short year because of right. COVID, but I just wasn't missing it. So here I am. <laughs> You know what? Like we actually love coming back every single time. Uh, it's just such a fun event. And you're right. The, you know, the people. Not only do, do are the filmmakers here fantastic, but the local, you know, patrons that actually come to watch the films enjoy it year after year. They love coming out and they love seeing all the independent films, which is great because it's showcasing, you know, all the independent filmmakers here in the in the area and from even from out of state. So, um, if people want to see the film or find out a little bit more about the film, where can they go to? Um, so I've got a couple of resources. Um, we're on social media. So on Facebook, it's um, Havelina Run Movie. And then um, Instagram is also Havelina Run Movie. And then um, also our website is a great place to check, which is HavelinaRunMovie.com. Um, and we are in the process of having a conversation about distribution, which I'm very excited about. So we will post that in all those places. So please check it out. And um, hopefully it will be available online and maybe overseas, domestic. I don't know. Well, we hope, we hope so, because I would love to be able to check it out. And for you guys out there, definitely check it out as well. We'll keep you posted on when it actually uh, comes out to you. this inside look of the Love Your Shorts Film Festival. For more information on the fest, please visit their website at loveyourshorts.com. And as always, follow us on our socials, ICSTV on Facebook and ICSTV Show on Instagram and Twitter. And if you want to be featured on Indie Cinema Showcase, email us at ICSTV at yahoo.com. And that's all the time we have for this episode of ICS. So as they say in the film industry, that's a wrap. See you next time.